Oh, there we go. All right. So, All right. you know, Phil and, and Drake approached me about the idea of doing like a studio visit. And um, I have to say it was the first time I ever used Zoom. This is the first time I've used it. <laughs> uh, so, but I, but I thought that, uh, I, I said, okay, one, because they've been great brothers and friends for so long, but also because, you know, in this time, you know, we have to find new ways to, to let the art reach people. And so uh, this is kind of an online version of something I did last year. I did a couple of events, actually. I did one studio visit. The first one was with a group called Transformer. And I'm sorry, the first one was actually with Millennium Art Salon, which is um, Juanita Hardy's organization. If I get to scroll through, I there may, may be some Millennium people on this, on this call. Uh, and then the second one was with Transformer. And I know some of you guys from through Transformer. Um, but then I also did one uh, just for my own people because I can invite a couple people to those other ones, but they were really uh, events put on by other, other groups. And so they were great events. I think, I mean, I, I see some of the people who've attended them here online. And what we did was, um, so I have a studio at home and I also have a studio out at, outside of the house at, at Pyramid, uh, Pyramid Atlantic. And so at home, I work on my collage work, which is about 80% of my practice. And then at Pyramid, I do my printmaking. So um, that's about 20% of my practice. And uh, when I've done these type of things in the past, um, what we did was the home studio was open. We kind of let people come up in, in small groups. And as you can see, it's a, it's a small space, but it's, it's ample, you know? And, um, and, you know, before I begin, I really want to thank my family, thank my wife, Tasha and my kids, Haley and Amari. I see him, he's clapping there. He probably yeah, see him. I see him. I see him there um, for supporting my artwork and you know, even letting me have the studio in the house and respecting it as such. And um, you know, this time has kind of validated one of my theories, which is that if possible, if an artist has a studio outside the house, they should have one inside the home too. And because I had one at home. I was able to kind of uh, revert um, back or consolidate my operation and um, continue to work during the time that we're in right now. And another one of my kind of, um, I see I see my parents there, Walter and Sharon Hutchins. Um, hi. And, um, you know, one of the, uh, one of the other, theories, I guess, is that you should own the means of production, right? So I basically stockpile materials. And so there's a certain paint that I use for all of my uh, large scale collage work. And it comes from France and it's hard to get, it's hard to get even in the good times. So whenever I get the certain colors that I like, I, I get them and actually all of them. So I have a whole a rack full of full of them and I wouldn't be able to get it now you know so um, I'm able to work and I'm taking this opportunity to really push forward and do some things that I've been wanting to do but haven't really uh, found the time to do you know some of you might have seen my um, it's the Alexander McQueen uh, studies like I, I posted a couple of things. Usually I don't, another thing is I usually don't post much of my work. Like I, I want people to see it in person. I don't want to, you know, it's really quite different looking at it in a picture um, versus seeing the actual thing. And so I try to reward people that see the actual thing by not sharing everything online, you know, and not just 
you know, it's, it's, it's different models. You know, my model is, is what it is. And, you know, I've kind of had a lot of, um, you know, I guess success with it, um, which is largely, largely outside of the so-called art world. You know, I believe that art belongs to the people. And so, like, we had some kids here right now. I give them some pencils and stuff. They start drawing, you know? So why and how did we get the idea that art should be uh, owned and controlled by a handful of people in New York? It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, something that's been done since the beginning of time on pyramids, on the walls of caves or whatever, and something as innate to human beings as just if you give a kid some markers, they're going to start drawing. So um, my whole operation has kind of been set up in a unique way. And what I want to do is um, I want to go through a quick little PowerPoint to, to show you um, something about my process and what informs it. And then I also want to show you some of my current body of work. You know, I'm, I'm affected by it um, because there's a show that I have right now that's at the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky. And it's, uh, it's shut down now as the museum is shut down, um, as all museums are shut down. Um, and I'll talk about that exhibition called Inheritance a little bit. Um, and I'll also talk about a project that I just did for the Phillips uh, collection here in DC. And, um, and I'll talk to you about what's my quarantine project, you know, and uh, for, for a hint, you might see it there on the wall behind me, um, a, a black and white version of it. But um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and start with the PowerPoint. Well, before, we get started, before we get started, Imar, I, I do want to say something. Just so people, uh, I think it's very important, um, and, you've, and you've alluded to it here, about uh, how some of your past things, and Drake talked about a little bit too, I was listening before I got on, uh, about uh, who you are and, and all the things you've done and what, what it brings to it. And I, I kind of want to start off by telling an anecdotal story that I remember. It goes back, it goes back a long time ago. Now, this is right. going back to 1994, okay? I was driving in DC and you were on the radio. And at the time, I believe, I want to say 1994, and you had just opened up, I believe, with the lights of the garden in D.C. And the, the person who was interviewing you was quite taken aback by you. I, I think that they were kind of uh, uh, totally surprised by how old you were, your age. And I, I'm sitting in my car driving, and I'm taken aback by you, too. <laughs> and I knew you, and I, and, and I, and I knew the story. But I, I sat there and I was listening, and you, and you said um, to the interviewer, I, I don't know who it was, but you said, and, and he was kind of being effusive, and he was giving you this praise, and you said, well, this is the way I look at it, and I'm quoting, and I'm trying to paraphrase you here. You said, uh, if you have a room full of people who are laying flat on their backs, the first person to raise their head off the ground is going to seem a miracle worker, right? And you said this. And now, all these years later, I still feel it's, 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 it's important to um, understand that. Even that type of understanding and that type of getting or, or getting to the truth or, or, or even somewhat downplaying your accomplishment, it's still so very vivid today. And I just want to, um, the only reason I, don't use again to a whole lot of animals, but I wanted to get into that one because I think it says a lot about the, the person and the artist you become as well. So just a, just a little statement there before we get into mm. the, to the heavy the heavy armor here. Well, you know, people are always telling me things that I said that I don't remember saying, and, that, and that's <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is, uh, <laughs> is that is that sunshine right there? Yeah, hi. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, wow. Um, so, I mean, I don't remember saying that, but um, 
but I do, I guess, believe that. And that's why, you know, when we had our preparation for this call, I was like, ah, you know, guys, don't, don't go through the, the laundry list. Don't go through this, this, whole, this whole litany of, of uh, you know, things because, you know, I don't really care about that. Like what it is, I don't want to, I mean, I'll tell you what we talked about. I said, I don't want to distract people. You know, I don't want to, this is, for me, it's about the art, you know? And so I don't want it to be like, oh, I'm not, I said, this is, this is a quote. I can remember what I said because it was yesterday or so. I am not on a marketing campaign. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, promote the work. You know, I'm not trying to sell it or hustle it. I don't need, I'm not looking to do that. So it's not like, oh, well, this is so great because this guy did this and now he's an artist. It's like, well, no, like if the word speaks to you, then it speaks to you, you know? And so it just reminds me, I mean, I wasn't going to talk about it uh, now or probably at all, but, you know, I used to be a, a um, street artist on West Broadway in Soho. You know, some of you might remember that. And um, so this is in like the 2000s, you know, 2002, three, four, in that, in that time period. And what I loved about it was that it was just, it's just democratic, you know? Like this is when all the artists, if anybody knows, there used to be a street with all the artists in New York and people just out there selling whatever. And um, so it didn't matter anything about it. You know, I'm a, I'm a self, as an artist, I'm a self-taught artist, you know? So I don't have any credentials to support me artistically. All I have is the work, you know, and it either resonates with people or it doesn't. And so I happen to have it here as if, as if planned, <laughs> I can show you guys, but this is the kind of work that I was doing at that time. I was doing these portraits of people, maybe hard to see here, but, um, these are people that I met on the street and I wasn't going out there to, to do it, but I met people who over time, they would say, Oh, you know, can you do something like that for me? And, um, and so I used the street for a studio, you know, other people used it as a, as a place to sell art, but I just used it as a place to work because I was doing something else during the week, you know? And so um, that was kind of, contrarian in the first place but I guess it kind of you know speaks to how I approach the art like if you look at it it has been in like waves you know it's been in waves and you guys were there at Morehouse there was a wave you know I was doing you probably remember I was doing t-shirts I was doing the the drum of Kim at the newspaper for Kim at, you know I was doing you know, different things like that um but as I, I'm going to go through the PowerPoint and then it will kind of relate back to this, actually. So, um, I'm going to see if I'm, see if I'm good enough to do this. Okay. All right. All right. So, well, I guess I'm going to have to let you see the, the sidebar because I have to control it at the same time. So. Um, it is what it is there. But this first picture is, is a, um, this is a one room schoolhouse founded by my ancestors in Columbia, Tennessee. And so this is, um, that would be one of my ancestors there on the left side. And these are all the kids. And um, one of my ancestors was known as the, the rifle toting teacher because he taught. So this would be my my great grandfather actually um, taught always with the rifle on the desk, right? So they were under that much threat. And there is actually a story when the, there was the rope around the neck of my great great grandfather to lynch him and one of the um one of the white people in the in the crowd uh talked them out of it and said that they had the wrong man but really they i'm sure they had the right man because the crime was teaching these black people you know so the log cabin that my great 
great grandfather built is still standing. The family's still living in it. He built it in 1843. They're still living in it today. I mean, you added on to it, but it's part of a house that still exists. And the school is now part of the um, the public school system. The school is still there too. Um, it's called College Hill School, Columbia, Tennessee. Is it and College then, Hill School? Yep. Okay, and so here's a picture that the photographer is is on the call. Walter Hutchins, my father, shot in uh, obviously 1965, 66, and uh, you know, it it kind of is a antecedent to the work that I do now, right? Um, my father has always been design oriented and um, and even in the name, it tells you that it's a reference to, you know, American Gothic and, um, and just the, the minimalist <laughs> kind of composition, you know, I see that in my own work, you know, the kind of uh, austerity and economy of the design, you know, is something that I, I strive for in my own work. And so uh, I, I go on and show you. So this is things that my father collected, um, you know, before I was even born. And if you look at that folder there, I don't know, it says collage, and um, that's a folder from the 60s, um, but no, no collage per se was made from it, you know, or some might have been, but the fact that I'm a collage artist, you know, you can get into a question of what came first, the chicken or the egg, right, because he, he kept, so I'm a child of the movement, <laughs> Right, and, and my father especially kept all these movement memorabilia. So I have things like publications very, that are probably the only, only copy of it existing in the world, you know? Um, but everything, I mean, and I'll show you, I'll try to show you my archives if we have time today. Um, and so, um, so what I try to do with my collage work is to integrate these historical documents, this kind of ephemera and old photographs, hate mail and death threats that the family received, et cetera. Um, and here I'll give you, I'll show you a couple of examples, you know, that are pretty poignant, you know. Here is, here is an image on the left of, if you can read it, I'll read it to you. It says, it's a, it's a protest against drugs in the black community. And this is when, as I say, you know, black people weren't <laughs> looking for or waiting for expecting someone to save, to save us, <laughs> you know? So what happens here is this is, this guy is not too old and that's standing up in the picture, but he's got a rope around his own kid's neck. You see that? And the pushes are lynching our beautiful children daily, you know? And, you know, I love to do like a <laughs> homage to Barclay Kendricks and do it like this, the full body, that would be dope. That would be dope. <laughs> but on the right side is a good example of an obscure publication you know, by the Black Liberation Commission of the Progressive Labor Party, pre-Civil War Black nationalism. And, you know, I don't know the, the author, but I can tell you, you read the first per page of something like this and you're like, wow, it, it will give you something to think about that you just, you haven't read in any book, you haven't seen on any show, you know, and, you know, when we get to my grandfather, uh, someone remind me to come back to why it was so important for us to keep our own archives historically. And so we'll move ahead. And so my first real uh, journey into the art 
Roberts was as a cartoonist, um, as editorial cartoonist for the Philadelphia Tribune, um, which is uh, uh, the black newspaper in Philadelphia, very old. Um, was it since 1880 something? And, um, and basically no one knew it was a kid doing them. So I did them from the time I was about 14 to 16 and nobody mm -hmm. knew that it was a kid doing it. And, <laughs> and, and it was great. They never, and it was, it was a real challenge because you had to, um, you had to be on top of everything that was going on. You had to know everything that was going on politically. You had to come up with something funny and you had to execute it, you know? And so um, it was, it was a challenge, but it was fun. They never told me what to do or not do. They never uh, directed what I should do editorially or whatever. And uh, one day they ran this <laughs> picture. Like a young me, yeah. They ran my picture under the, under the cartoon. And I remember all the kids at school were like, I didn't know you did the cartoons, you know? And I was like, yeah, I do the cartoons. <laughs> and um, so that was, uh, that was kind of my first uh, iteration of, of being an artist, you know? And, um, and I, I moved forward. This is, so I have a great affinity for printmakers um, and prints in general. And it's one of the reasons that I do prints. Like not a lot of artists actually um, are uh, so-called, you know, I kind of eschew these different delineations, but so-called fine artists and, um, and also execute their own prints, you know? Um, I mean, I've been told that on the, on the fine arts point, you know, I've been told that I was not a fine artist, I was a commercial artist or an illustrator, you know, and my response was that I don't accept those delineations, you know, and that was by someone very esteemed in the art world. And I said, well, we just have to agree to disagree. And then to make a long story short, this person, uh, you know, within a couple of years was trying to buy my stuff. Um, but so anyway, let me just say, this is Rafael Morante, a Cuban um, printmaker. Uh, this is an homage to George Jackson, right? It's about the death of George Jackson, the, not the death, the, the murder of George Jackson, <laughs> a state-sponsored uh, murder of George Jackson. And, um, and, so I love especially Cuban and Puerto Rican printmakers, but all printmakers. And um, I'll just go through a couple of things. There's, that's actually the original. So my process is, even for a print, there's always, almost always a collage original. Um, so this was my Kaepernick that some of you has, uh, Drake has it behind him. See it there on the wall. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I'll just, I'm going to try to move quickly to stay on schedule. These are the things actually I was trying to show you that I did on the street. These are portraits of people that I did, that I met on the street. I didn't do them on the street, but, you know, maybe take me a month to do one, but I met them on the street. Um, here is an image from Florida Avenue Girl. Florida Avenue Girl is definitely a, a time machine because Whenever you take a picture there, especially if it's black and white, it immediately looks as though it's 50 years old. <laughs> and the only clue in this picture is that the kid's shoes, that's the only picture, clue to the wind, so that it's, that it's not an old picture. Um, I'll keep going. And we're getting into my um, sacred cow's body of work. And uh, a lot of you probably have seen it or are familiar with it. But this is a portrait of my daughter, who might be on the call. Um, and so the idea of the Sacred House show was that um, 
you know how in in India and not just India and this is the this is the flyer for the show um, the cows are considered sacred and also in Africa and other places but the idea was to just challenge a conception that in in America what if black people were like sacred cows so what if every time one, a black person went into a Starbucks, for example, everyone got up from their seat and said, oh, no, take my, take my seat, you know? Oh, let me buy you something, you know? And it's just a way of challenging the conception, just flipping it. What if you wanted to, you know, if the cow sits down in the road, the traffic has to go around. What if, if a black person sat down in the middle of the street, traffic had to just go around? Because basically our continued existence is such a miracle that, you know, we should be sacred cows. And what I used in this one is the, um, that panel that that's on is the old original tin ceiling of the Florida Avenue Grill. And what happened was that the ceiling was too bad. It was being torn out and the guys were taking it out. And I was like looking at it and I was like, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. I need that, I need that ceiling. And they're like, this, this trash? I'm like, yeah, I need it. And you know why? Because if you look at it closely, those are indinkerous symbols on the ceiling. And it, it came together for me because I had just been studying how, you know, Blacks did all the metal work back in the day. And, uh, and then it, it came to me that the ancestors sent us a, a message through the eons in that ceiling. See, the person, the guy that told them to do the ceiling was like, oh, just make it a pretty pattern. And they're like, yeah, yes, boss, you know? And, but they remembered and they put messages in there. And so that most prominent message in there is the Sankofa, which means, one of the means is learn from your mistakes, you know? And if you think about it, why they do the ceiling like that and not the floor? Because it's as if to say, well, when you look up, think of us, you see? And here's a little, another piece that I did from that same body of work where I had a, a little um, tracing or well, painting of the, of the same pattern. And we just have a couple of symbols that you see in it there on the right. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going so we stay on, stay on schedule. Um, this is a portrait of, of Dolan, who is uh, Dolan Perkins Valdez, um, uh, that was in the Sacred Cow's Body of Work. And uh, there is a, there's a self-portrait that's in it. And this is, well, it's not the first, but it's the second time I used the hate mail in incorporated hate mail into the pieces. And this is in the collection of John and Cindy Borders that that might be on the call as well. Uh, and this is actually the only piece that's not new that's in the Ali Center show. They lent it for the Ali Center show because really they spearheaded that show and they, they always said that, you know, we were gonna do something in Kentucky. So they kind of spoke that into existence. And we'll, we'll come back to the hate mail later. Uh, that's just an installation view of a couple of pieces. There's a, can't see it that well here, it's a portrait of my father in the middle, the cow with the, all, those, all those pink circles around his neck. Um, and then moving forward, um, this is 2018, the next um, body of work is called Chattel. And this was, um, a continuation of the sacred cows theme in the sense that if you take out the word, the letter H, chattel is cattle. And chattel slavery is a type of slavery that blacks were held in in this country. And, um, and the reason that I dwell on it here, I mean, in the Ali, this is the first instance of the Ali and uh, you see the horns are kind of abstracted in his, in his afro there. Even the Kaepernick had horns in his hair, uh, horns in his afro, look. See, can you see if you can see him? 
I don't know if you guys can see the mouse or not when I move it. Can you see it or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see yeah. Yeah, the horns see it. there. Uh -huh. So uh, just coming back. Um, so the idea being that, um, you know, the, that we are the thing of value, you know, like in the Bible in those days, it was like so-and-so had so many oxes and so many sheep and so on. So that, that was like saying they had so many millions and so many billions. That was, that was the store of value. So what I'm saying is that, you know, we were the thing of value and we are the thing of value, you know? So again, Philippian conception, um, if we adopt that thinking, what, what, what does that mean? You know, and here's a picture of a uh, Carrie James Marshall, uh, painting that you know could be viewed as an influence as David Walker's as David Walker David Walker's appeal and uh I don't know but I know the appeal was in his jacket you know and look at how big the jacket is look at, compared to the person hey, but, Imar, yeah I just got a uh, someone just asked me uh are any of your works for sale it sounds like you are generating some interest. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, it's a good, it's a good problem to have, but nothing is for sale right now. Oh, um, see, I lied because I said yes, but okay. No, I mean everything is, everything I do is either spoken for in advance or, or what have you. But I do have my quarantine project, which I'll talk about soon, which people can get on the list for if they want it. Um, and that will be a print. So that's why, just to come back to why I do the prints, because now at this time, the chat all time, my size was a little bit smaller than it is now. Now my pieces are, are six feet tall. So this is, this is a shot from the chattel show, which shows that was the first piece I did that was that big, um, but it's also the size I'm working in now. And, um, because of the size, my outfit is really low, so I can do like four or four to five pieces in a year. And so, um, as they get bigger, I mean, it's just, you know, you have issues that a painter doesn't have because you can always buy more paint of it, whatever color you want. But like, I may have some particular piece of some magazine that's in the palette that wasn't used at that time, but it just happens to be around and I can't get more of it, you know? And I have to, you know, have a lot of other considerations that all of which slow down the process or, or make the output lower. And, um, but that's why I do the prints so they can be more accessible. And here is one where you're seeing, it started out as a collage and a show uh, Lisa Brown Peace Street Gallery here in DC and um, from the collage it evolved into a print and then this one evolved and got bigger and it got uh, midnight it became a midnight <laughs> indigo palette piece and um, and I could I mean I could talk for an hour about any of these so I'm just going to keep moving um, I'll show you Marcus Gary. this is a good example of something that has never been seen online. I'll show you a lot, of, like that, that Tucson, I don't think has been seen online either, but this is a Garvey that was in the chattel show. And, you know, those are some color studies when I was figuring out how I wanted to do it. And there's a sketch. So the thing about Garvey, like there's a lot of research behind all of my pieces. And um, sometimes I study people for a year. So like I studied prints for a year. You know, I studied Garvey for about a year. Uh, and what I want to point out here is that his, you know, if you look up, you can Google color pictures of Garvey and there'll be colorized um, photos of him uh, because of course they're black and white. And he's always got a blue coat on and maybe red, white and blue feathers or whatever. But basically it's a mistake. Um, it's people copying people who made a mistake in the first place, and it's just derivative now. But he wore a purple suit, 
it looks blue in, in black and white pictures, but it's actually purple and gold. And so I imagine Garvey a little bit different because I said, you know, anybody who wears a purple suit is a colorful person. <laughs> you know, so he's Jamaican and he wore a purple suit. So he was his own daddy, you know? <laughs> and so I kind of depicted him in this more uh, festive, festive way. Um, and let me keep going, stay on track here. This is just a, uh, go ahead. I have actually, someone presented a question to your father. I don't know if he, uh, his mic is unmuted, but uh, someone is asking, they said to uh, Mr. Hutchins, how did you find time to, uh, balancing and encouraging and directing Imar's talent? And Imar, you can go on and tell your father, you know, I guess okay. his mic going. Oh, wait, I think he's. Go ahead. Are you talking? Not talking. Come okay. back to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, how about this, Will? We're, the plan is to have a Q&A um, at the end. And so let me just rush through the rest of this. And um, this is a detail of the, of the Toussaint piece. And it was all about the sea. It's all about the, um, how the Haitians beat the French Navy, which is the most powerful military in the world at the time. And this is, um, this is a Frederick Douglass. Um, that was the study for Frederick Douglass. It's homage to John Johnson and to Frederick Douglass. It's one of the few Ebony's and I have a lot that they went away from the red logo, red and white logo. So it's almost as if it's a, you know, life had the same red and white logo. And Ebony was basically the, the black version of life. And it's almost as if they said, this is not the black version of something else. This is, this is something special. So it's the 100th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. That's the, that's the issue. And I just love the way especially when you see it in person, the way it looks. So I, I use that Frederick Douglass and um, for the, for the in inspiration for the piece. And, you know, the only thing I didn't show the whole, I was struggling at one point because it was too literal and I had the words and everything. And then I figured out that if you had the black, all you needed was the red to represent Ebony. You didn't need the words. You didn't need all that stuff. And, um, and so I did it that way. This is Octavia Butler. Um, if you think back to Toussaint, look at how it has the same two crosses in the same two locations on the page. And I had never even seen this before. Um, but this is, that's the original cover of the first edition Mind of My Mind. And you see they had done the, um, this thing that was popular to they call it whitewashing, where they thought that they made it evident that there was a black author, people wouldn't read it. So there's no picture of her, there's no indication that she was black. And, um, and so what I did was I put her in her own a book cover. And, and I put her as a teenager because she's 14 years old in this picture. And there's a little detail. What I did, I, I recreated the manuscript pages from, from some books and then I redid her edits that she made to the, to the manuscript uh, myself. And there's an example of the process. So just to get into the process more, you know, I'm on some real like uh, <laughs> Wagner type of thing here. Where <laughs> I, like, uh, I make my own frames, I mill the wood for them, you know, I, um, I stretch my own canvases. Um, I I do it all. So basically, it's like if it if it falls off the wall, it's not because oh you know, Blick doesn't make good frames anymore. It's because I messed up, you know. <laughs> and if it doesn't, then it doesn't, you know. It's it's just about that. So just quickly going through this, this is the, <laughs> but you'll get to see the process of how. Uh, full-scale collage turns into a print sometimes 
maybe one a year. But this is Josephine Baker. This was a, so that poster on the left is, is a historical poster. You know, I could talk about that. But for now, I'll just say it's the only one that focused on her body and not her face, on her face and not her body. That's the only Josephine poster in existence that focused on her face and not her body. And what I did in the Josephine here is that I made it, she, most people don't know, she adopted 12 kids of every race and religion in the world. I'm not sure if people know that. And so if you look at it, the kids are in her hair. Can you see that? You see it as kids of every description in her hair. And they're not literally the kids, they are, they are kids that represent them. And the only adult in it is Mother Hale, who's got a baby in her arms right there. And Josephine was essentially an orphan. And so she loved kids that had been orphaned. And this military green here is because she was a spy in the French resistance. And uh, I could say more, but I'll just keep going. And so my process was when I decided to make a print out of it that I use a million little pieces of paper and this is only colors, right? So if you look at this, you say, oh yeah, yeah, it's the same as the other one. But then when you look at them side to side by side, they're really quite different. There's no clippings. One is only, one is only color and one is only old newspapers basically and magazines and stuff. Um, and then in terms of process, if I'm gonna make a print, then I, I make the print myself. And um, let's see, I wonder if this will work. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see me, um, you can see me making the print right there. This is, a lot of people who even have my friends see something like this and they say, oh, I didn't know you make the prints. <laughs> But yes, I, I make the prints. They're not, uh, they don't come out of a machine or anything like that. And this is just a little vignette of me, I guess, putting on the last layer. So there'll be a different screen for each color. And you know, you have to mix each color and you have to separate them. And then um, here I'm putting on the last, um, the last, there's 18 colors in the Josephine and I'm putting on the last color or the last uh, drop, um, you get to see it go down there. Okay. And so I'll go on, and there it is, pretty much done. James Baldwin, this is all, this is in the inheritance body of work, so I should really show you that. This is the show that's going now or would be going now, uh, was first here in, in DC area at Pyramid, and then um, it's in Muhammad, at the Muhammad Ali Center right now in Louisville, Kentucky. James Baldwin is, there's a portrait of James Baldwin, it's in the show, um, and, uh, and I had different studies of him, and uh, you know, I had three different ones that I liked and I had to decide which to go with. And um, the answer is neither of these two that you see here. Um, there is uh, Simone Lee working and I'm gonna go quicker. There's a, there is my first portrait of a non-human. <laughs> That's a portrait of a, of a sculpture. Uh, it's an homage to Simone, and it's a, but you notice it has the horn, so it's a uh, sacred cow version, right? And um, then, oh, yeah, but I haven't shown that online, and then I have, this is kind of in process, this is how it happens here in the studio. And if we have time, I'll show you a little time lapse for that, but I, I'm going to just keep going now. So there is the, the reference for that piece. That was a portrait of my mom that was the uh, cover image for the inheritance show. And there is some color studies and a sketch based on that. 
And there is some in-process photos. And uh, there is some ephemera. I can really talk about that quite a bit. But I want to go ahead and let people start asking questions. So I'm going to I'm going to just flip through these here. This is some uh, historical documents that really uh, bear talking about, but we're going to just keep moving. This is awesome. This is a portrait of my sketch for a study for a portrait of my grandfather. Um, my research included going to the archives at the University of Louisville. There's John Borders and me in the archives at U of L studying my grandfather. Even though he's my grandfather, I studied him as if I as if I didn't know him. And uh, then there's the finished piece at, as installed at, at Pyramid. Um, and you'll see, you know, all this ephemera and all this stuff about my process is part of the um, is part of these shows. And uh, I would show you more, but we're going to just keep moving. Um, here's one that nobody's seen. Some of you know who that's for. Um, there is, well, that tells you which James Baldwin I used, a third one. And Doug Jones, I don't know if he's on the call, but he is the owner of the, um, the, the full scale one, six foot tall one. So, uh, last thing that I'll do is I will, I'll show you the, um, I'll stop that, but I'll show you the, um, the piece that's going to, that I decided, I'm trying to convert my garage right now into a, um, screen print studio so that I can work on this piece, which is going to be a, a print, an Ali print, um, which is my quarantine project. Okay, and I have a little quick time left to show you the process, how I came up with the, uh, the collage that's going to be the basis of the print. You guys can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's a bigger, there's a six foot tall one of this that is intended to be public art and stay in Louisville. And that's in the show. And uh, I skipped over that in the interest of time, but if anyone is interested in the question about buying work, this is the only thing that would be available. Um, and um, the way to get it would be to get, to let, to contact me and say, you wanna be on the list for it. And uh, it'll be a print probably in another couple of months. Uh, I have to work on some, figure out how I'm gonna produce it in these quarantine conditions, but I'm going to stop the share and uh, come back. Okay. Hey, um, Imar, you know, one thing that I've, that I've been very, very fascinated by, and, and this is, and some of it's just from my own study of the work, and some of it's through our, our conversation, our own discourse, but um, and in particular, the inheritance uh, work and what's, what's happening now. Um, I find it very interesting, the, and the one word that I write down is time. And, and the reason I write it down is because uh, there's a, a very interesting way of looking at who, even our conversation, I was saying what kind of historical figures, Baldwin and Ali, uh, so on and so forth. But I know our conversation that you, you like the term intergalactic, and, 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 and your, your kind of thinking of these things to a few of, it, of a, a sense of Afrofuturism involved in it. So there's this kind of melding of the past. You're, you're choosing different times to reflect the artist, if they're a young person or an older person. How, how important is it? Is this a, 
a, a thought that you are that's guiding your production or is it something that's just kind of you're seeing it coming out of the work that you're doing okay so the idea for the inheritance the name it came from something my uncle said at a at a dinner uh at uk two years ago in honor of my grandfather my grandfather is long deceased but my, my uncle said not all inheritance is financial you know and not all inheritance is physical at all so what he was challenging us to do is to think more broadly to define it more broadly so that we can inherit from people who are not our lineal ancestors right and so we can also uh, so that some of the people in that body work are but a lot of people aren't and those are those are basically there's an inheritance there for people to claim really from anyone if they want to and it's a it's a thing it's a question of whether your your mind is even open to thinking in those terms and so that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to do with the with the body of work and it's a it's a you know where it comes from is a really great question because like sometimes i do something and i say well i can't do that you know what i mean like like uh like you know some of these sketches for example like i talked about this in another talk but i say well, i can't i can't do that you know like i don't know where it came from and so what i'm going to do is show you I'm going to show you a couple of things that that make that point, All right? I'm going to. This is a. Let's see if we got it. Yeah. So, I can give you a little walk around the studio here, and you can see nice. some of you have been here before. Nice. The cleanest it's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, an example of something that I would look at and say, well, I can't do it, it would be, it would be that, you know, like, I don't know where that came from, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, or there, there's somebody, that's Kamasi Washington right there. You do all of this research on the subjects, particularly in inheritance. What, what, what are some of the the, uh, the kind of nuggets you found? I mean, a year's worth of research. There has to be uh, some kind of some kind of other narrative that comes out of this about the. About yeah. The, so. Well, this is this is a good question, and it's a debate, not a debate, but a conversation that my father and I have had about, you know, you should have some type of legend or something there for it. And uh, I don't feel like I should because I feel like the work should speak for itself. And if I need to put a, a, a body of text with it to make it work, then, then it's not doing what it's supposed to do. But on the other hand, um, you know, I think that the great thing about a, a painting is that it can slow time down, you know? So you can live with a painting or a work of art and every day that you live with it, even though you've had it for years, you can get something new out of it, you know? And, for, and it could be something that I didn't even see. So like, or I don't even know that I'm doing. So a lot of times people will tell me things about my work that I didn't know. So for me to even tell you it presumes that i've got the answers you know a lot of times for me it's like it's not trying to come up with something new it's almost like trying to remember something old you know it's trying to see through the fog to like see that thing right um and so since since we're not since the show is closed i just want to share one quick a little one minute walkthrough of the of that show so you can so you can see it. Um, can you guys see that? Yeah, right? 
This is the one at the Ali Center. Here's Baldwin, you saw Simone, saw Southport. There's the big Ali. There's the one of my mom. Oh, here's the one of my grandfather. UK lent it to Ali for this. And um, there is some more. There is there is the big James Baldwin. Wow. Wow. No one has seen that. There's there's Prince. There's Benjamin Banneker. They're the Prince. And there's Brother Oz, real to real recorder. Real to real. I could say I could talk for an hour about any one of those things, but let's let's let people ask questions, and you guys can also ask. Yeah. Um, yeah, Imari, I do have a few questions for you. Uh, somebody asked, what is the, uh, actually, two, two of our uh, big collectors in the Detroit area are asking this question here. What are the typical sizes for your pieces? So right now they're, they're six feet tall by uh, four and a half feet wide. Okay. But the stuff I'm working on right, right now uh, is bigger than that. Actually, wow. Um, will the Louis will the Louisville show be extended? Um, we don't know yet. I think it depends how this whole thing plays out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It's not even supposed to be over yet. I think it it would be over in a few days, but um, we don't know. Okay. We, we see we see the trend is going and and institutions developing these viewing rooms and things of that nature. Do you think the Muhammad Ali Center might go down um, on that right? We have haven't even talked about it. Um, there, everyone's in a lot of trying to figure out uh, what's the next steps. Because in my case, all these belong to people, you know, like I said, even though they're new, part of my model is that even if I do something for you, you have to let me have it in the show. So that's why commissions could be a could be a, a slippery slope for an artist if they're not careful, right? So you could just I could find myself only do if I do something for you, Phil, you and me might be the only two people who ever see it. You know, and that I don't think is is right. I think it has to be shared with the world, even if it's gonna go ultimately to, to somebody's so private. So, so that does answer another question that I had. You do make prints of your commission works. Well, um, not necessarily. I do about one print a year, and it, like the Ali print that we that we showed, um, that is that is basically a print of a bigger piece. But it's not it's not the same. <laughs> it's quite different if you really look at it. But um, I can do, I do about an average of one and a half prints a year. So this was busy because I did, and I didn't get to talk about it, but I think I saw Deborah on the, on the line who helped me with this. I did a print for the Phillips collection, which um, is, was something we were able to get done during this, during this shutdown or on the early side of it anyway. And um, I definitely want to, shout out her and the other people who helped to uh, to make that possible and i think i'll okay. even if i if i can i'll uh, yeah let me actually let me actually do something real quick so, so i'm going to share i'm going to share a quick one minute video about that piece so i can so i can thank the people that, that helped me with that Okay. Can you guys see it okay? Yeah. So this is just, this is homage to Romare Bearden, 
Romari Bearden, okay? Um, and now it's Romari Bearden, yeah. <laughs> his fate, his, his, it's for a show called Rifts and Relations, which is at the Phillips Collection now. It's going to be extended through the end of the year, but they don't know when they're going to open it. Um, but it's a big honor to be commissioned to do a print uh, to commemorate the, the show. And um, because of the time, there is Deborah, because of the time constraints, I had to get all the talented printmakers at Pyramid to help me to, um, to complete this project. And um, it's called Queen Poseidon of the Lost Sons. And so basically it's a, it's an homage to a Bearden uh, piece, which I'll show you the, you guys might know the Bearden. Um, this is, this is Bearden's Poseidon. So what I've done is I, to make a long story short, I imagine Poseidon is a woman. She's Queen Poseidon. Cyclops, the skull that is her son, it represents the souls lost to, uh, lost to violence in the black community. And instead of fish or along with the fish uh, floating in the water, you will see, you see the guns. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I can talk about that a lot, but we're proud of that. And um, let me let me turn that off. Okay. So go ahead. And I think actually I think that there's a few of them left. Um, less than ten. You, go ahead. You got some more questions, Rick? Yeah, you know what? Um, yes, yeah, someone uh, who asked this question. Oh, Katura uh -huh. Jeffries, yeah. uh, another collector. Uh, how long does it take you to do a full collage? Oh, you said, we already said that. Uh, and then, <laughs> let me take my glasses off. My vision is not what it used to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you... Going back to, you know what, while we, while I look through these questions, I'm going to actually, it was a, a revisit of the question that someone asked of your father, uh, if we could pull him in as well. Okay. Um, but in terms of, uh, how long does it take you to pull the full on? Well, I'll answer this one. Uh, would you ever consider doing outdoor murals? That would be amazing. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, and I think you can let people raise hand and ask questions. Um, yeah. Raise, raise hand button. Um, but I'm not so keen on the outdoor murals, even though I mm -hmm. love it. I thought about doing it, but it's just because it's, well, I have some, some political views on it. And I mean, mainly about how artists are being used as a kind of a cover for a lot of gentrification. <laughs> and so paint the wall of this building. The only reason there's a party wall there, I'm speaking about DC, but everywhere. The only reason the party wall exists is because whoever is trying to acquire the land next to it hasn't been able to put the whole thing together yet. And once they do, that wall is getting covered up. If it weren't, if it weren't, it wouldn't be just a flat, wall would have windows and everything but you can't do that on a party wall there's that but then also um it's just another totally separate thing you have to be really like focused on that and like you know you gotta have your sky jacks and and everything together and i just let people have that lane even though you know we are thinking about some collaborations. I mean, one thing I didn't show you, I should show you guys since you're, since you're here, I have to give some rewards for people that, to see things that they wouldn't have seen otherwise, but I'm doing, I'm doing a skate deck. Um, 
Let's see, are we on? <laughs> okay, so this is, this is actually what I'm working on right now. It's a, this is my first skate deck. And I wish you could see, this is almost like a carbon type of groove, but this is a Tucson and it's going to be a collage. It's going to be, the deck is actually going to be a collage. And, but I am going to do, like, I think a very small number of prints. It'll probably be like invitation only type of thing. Um, some of the people that collect my, my work. Uh, because there's a lot of technical difficulties uh, to overcome to uh, for me to do what I want to do on it. But okay. go ahead. Okay, I think we have some hands raised. I unmuted a couple of mics. Uh, Camille, did you have a question? Yes. Um, first, I'll say thank you to, for you guys doing this. This was amazing. Um, and then my question is for um, Mr. Walter Hutchins, um, asking how do you strike the balance between encouraging your, your kids' talent and like doing too much to direct it? I have a seven-year-old who, whose teachers and who we've seen like him be very artistic since a young age. Um, he was on the call in the beginning and he was watching, he, you know, he's seven, so he went to go watch TV after that, but trying to figure out how to keep him focused, but how not to like be overbearing as a parent. All I could suggest is go with the flow. Don't try to control it. You'll, you'll know what to do. Okay, thank you. I would like to throw something in here real quick, Imar. You know, I was thinking of, I saw something that your grandfather had said, or that you were doing a, a remembrance of something your grandfather had told you. And um, it, was, it was centered around uh, being diligent and, and keeping up the work. And when he was talking about some of his own accomplishments to you, he, and he got to the point where he was talking about how fragile, you know, all of your achievements are, all of your movements forward could be, and I'm not paraphrasing, of course. Uh, and I thought it was interesting that in the talk of inheritance and the talk of legacy, this is what you remember at that time. Is that something that has been guiding for you in your work or, or particularly in this project as inheritance is? Um, well, I, I think that, uh, you know, I listen, there's a, there's a 60 hours of interviews with my grandfather that are now, they've been discovered. Uh, they're the basis for a biography of him called The Rest of the Dream. But the interviews are really amazing. And I've listened to all 60 hours of them. And uh, what I would say is that on there, I, I heard him say things that that I never heard him say, I've never heard anybody say, but that I say myself, <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, we're not always aware of all the influences and, and we don't have as much control as we think we do, you know? Um, it's about, um, I mean, one thing that certainly um, from your quote earlier, from your quote that you said, I said that I don't remember saying, but like, you know, being too carried away with oneself is kind of like a mistake, in my opinion, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'm, I'm on a mission to do, to create the best art that I can, you know, and so like the reasons I do it are so, so different than what people think, you know? And it's almost like, it's not even worth uh, discussing, you know? 
I'll let the I'll let the the work speak for it speak for itself. So like, you know, ideally when I'm when I'm gone, you know, you don't have to read a book or ask somebody, oh what, what, what was Emar like? Whatever I had to say, I, I said it right here. You know what I mean? I said it on the canvas or on the skate deck or in the book or whatever. And I said it. Imar, you uh, you talked about a lot on uh, preparing for this. One word that you you used a lot, and you haven't used, I haven't heard you say it today, and I mentioned it earlier, but you like to use the word intergalactic. <laughs> and okay. I, I liked, you know, and, and your take on intergalacticism was really was great because it did not necessarily always intersect with fame. It was just just something that you talked about it being uh, something that you you might see as a, a certain uniqueness or a je ne sais quoi in your subject. So, you know, if you could speak to this whole concept of... Okay, I know what you're talking about. I mean, basically, I said the only prerequisite for me to do your portrait is for you to be intergalactic. You know, it's not, it's not about being famous or rich or anything like that. And that's why in every one of my shows, there's always people who are not so-called famous. Or if they are, um, like Banneker, I did a portrait of him when he's 19 years old. Like all the other, there's not a lot of representations of him, but if they are there when he's older, because he was in his 60s when he did the survey of Washington, you know, but he was 19 when he invented or made a clock out of wood, right? His first <laughs> notice was he built a clock out of wood that struck every hour on the hour, carved all the gears and everything out of wood, but never having seen such a clock, and there were only three people in the United States that could build a clock at all, and they had all been trained in Europe for decades. But a 19-year-old unlearned kid that never had a book until he was in his 30s built a clock out of wood that struck for 50 years until his death, you know, never having even seen one. And so that was pretty amazing, you know? And so I did him when he was 19 when he built that clock. You know, so one of the reasons I do people, um, even the Ali, you know, see, it's a young Muhammad Ali, you know, um, or the Octavia Butler, she's a teenager in that. It's to show people, especially uh, young people, that, you know, this person is intergalactic, but you might be too. You know, they were intergalactic before you ever knew their name or before anybody knew their name. And whether anyone did or not, see, so. Absolutely, absolutely. There's something that I asked you to show, to, and, and you haven't shown it, and, and uh, this is probably more selfish of me, you know, geographically, um, but the, the Shinola logo, okay. you, you, know, you know or met the owner of Shinola, he saw your work, and, and uh, he asked you to, he, to do a piece for the, for the store. Okay, um, I can show you that. I should have known you were gonna. You were gonna <laughs> yeah. So um, this is a. It's a piece that I did. Um, it's a portrait of a real person, um, and it's not. There's no print of it. I never did a print, but the idea, the thought was that I was going to do a print. Um, I do know those guys. And, um, you know, we, we talked about a lot of things, but we kind of got busy and, and I never did it. And, um, but I'll, I'll show it to you anyway, since you, uh, since you asked. And uh, let's see, all right here. Okay, so I can, well. The best thing for me to do is to show it to you on my phone because it's not even a, it's a raw file. Um, but I, I should have known Detroit was going to want a uh, <laughs> recognition here. <laughs> 
you know, it's it's such a it's such it's such an aspirational uh, brand in this area, and it's 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 made such waves and such impact that you know I think it's quite impressive that that you actually have some connection to some of its uh, some of its yeah, marketing. This is, this is before it was framed up and all, um, but. You see it? Mm -hmm. You guys see it now? Yep. Yeah, you see it. Okay. So, yeah, it's, this is a real person. She was the GM of the DC store. Um, and um, this is when they only did watches. And so, um, yeah, it, it's cool. I think. Um, you know, when I did the Phillips, for example, um, I had the Phillips logo on there, but it was important to me that it be hand drawn and part of a collage. So there's an original collage with gold on it, like bearded and youth, and with the logo in cut out in different, different, uh, colors and stuff like that. Um, and this one, the hair is really cool. Um, this is when I um, was doing, well, I'm always doing experimenting, but I was experimenting with, with hair. And, and also, you know, uh, one of the uh, hallmarks of my stuff is kind of iconographic, you know? So like what could be removed, what's essential and what isn't. So like she doesn't have eyes, she doesn't have a nose, you know what I mean? She doesn't have a chin, you know, but it still it still communicates, I think. Yeah. And it looks it looks like we have about uh four more minutes uh and you know we'll we we've been on time. So if anybody has any other questions, please uh you know raise your hand or 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 uh, yeah. ask it now, so so we e mark can have a speed session, speed answering session. <laughs> I'm gonna thank some of my collectors who were on the call, and now I can look. Here's Lee Perrine, Andrea Madden's there, Jenny Tucker, Sylvia that, that is on the list for Ali. Your collector, Sylvia White. Um, let's see. Oh, Paul and Lori, hi. Um, hey, they're on the list for Ali, too. Um, Dana Jackson's there. Uh, Erica Gibson is actually, hi, Erica. Um, she is the um, owner of the uh, original Josephine um, print. I mean, not print, the original Josephine collage, the big one. Um, um, you know what? Deborah Grayson, Nikki, I think, Darnella Robertson. Uh, the kids want to come in and say hi. Okay. Where are okay. we? Okay. Where's the camera? Okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. You're gonna have to. You gotta go back. There you are. Ah. Yeah. You smell right. good. <laughs> you know something? Uh, as people drop off, how's how are you all doing? Yeah. yeah. Great, great, great. It looks like people are following up, but before they do, I definitely want to just uh, just say thank you, Imar. This has been excellent. There are a couple of other artists that I know who are on here: uh, Sabrina Nelson and Judy Bowman, who is also a um she also does she's also a collage artist that's located here in Detroit and Sabrina's actually an artist who's dealt a lot with Baldwin so um I'm excited about them being uh on here today and we're just super excited uh got, you got another question from uh Ron Tate saying how did Morehouse impact hey, your experience <laughs> as an artist oh well, you know <laughs> <laughs> Morehouse and Stallman. I love you guys. I love everybody on the call. Thank you for, for joining and thank you for 
you know, letting me bring my art into your house during these times. And uh, I'm just really it. honored to be able to do it. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you, Drake. Thanks, Phil. Drake? You got a nice team there. You got a nice team there, Imar. <laughs> the original Drake. The original Drake. Drake. <laughs> no, and, 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 and we, we'll be here again next week. And I hope that everyone who was able to make it today will be able to make it next week. We will be featuring Sabrina Nelson. And uh, we'll have another artist talk with her as well. So you all are welcome to come, the whole family. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. As well for the more. I love your work. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for Thank taking you. your yeah. time. Yeah. I especially like the um, James Baldwin. I, I'm just a little biased. I'm <laughs> muted. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute people so I can hear what they're saying. Hey, unmute yourself if you can. <laughs> Everybody's unmuted now. Everybody's unmuted. Yeah, I hate to Hi, thank you. That was Hi, great. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. This was great. Mar. Hi, thanks, Imar. Thank you. Thank you. Take care of yourselves, you guys. Thank you, Drake. Oh, you are absolutely welcome. Hi, Erica. Hi, everyone. Erica and Hamburg. Hey, Imar. Good job, Imar. Erica. <laughs> All <laughs> no. Bye. Okay, everyone. Oh, I'm up. Is still on. See you next week. Okay. Hey, Phil, you're falling off already? <laughs> no, I gotta figure out. Virtual background, the Obama virtual background. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> what, what's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, Phil and Obama look alike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't look on your head. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Right, that was amazing. Thank it's you. good to see you, Sabrina. It's good to, it's good to meet you. Thank you, baby. It's good to meet you, too. I mean, you know, so like in my head, Imar, do you know Mario? Hey, Gina, how you doing? Yeah. The Mario that works at the I'm not sure if, if he can hear me, but. No, I can't hear you right now. You can? I can hear you, yes. Oh, I was just saying, do you know Mario? Because I feel like you guys may have been in um, kind of uh, some cyclical shows together. Um, I'm not sure. Mario was. Mario Moore. He's teaching at Princeton right now but he graduated from Yale's master's program. Okay, I'm not sure that I do, I may, but I'm not sure. I will um, try and ask him. Um, I know a show that's, that's going around um, Men of Change, and I'm not sure if I saw um, some of your work that was related to that, but that might not be so. It's a traveling show right now. I, I really don't. I think it started in Ohio and it's just sort of moving around. But with the COVID, I don't even know where it is right now. Okay. We can be okay. anywhere. Dana, I see, I see that. Is that the room where the bald one is? Where? Did you send me a picture of yesterday? Oh, Did he have the bald one? I think Dana, I think Dana maybe. Uh, can you hear Dana, me? Uh, Dana Jackson? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you have one of the Baldwins? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I have one of the most recent, the one he just uh, referenced. Okay, is that the really, the really big one? No, I have uh, one that uh, is similar to the one that's in the show. So I have it on an easel in my dining room. I sent uh, Imara a picture of it yesterday. <laughs> Nice, very, very nice. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic work. Do you like the, did you open up the one yesterday? Hey, pardon? Did you open up the Phillips one yet? 
Can you repeat? Did you open up the collection print yet? Oh, I have it right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to open it now. I don't have to take your no, time. No, I want you to print it. I want to see you.